Wealth can wane. Kinfolk of influence shall die. Someday you too might die. But I know one thing that'll never die. And that's the honor of somebody who's earned his draft at some point. Come closer and let an old skjald tell the story of one such person. This is Heroes of Our Folk. <clears throat> Hail and welcome to another edition of Heroes of Our Folk. This month I'd like to tell you this tale of Queen Sigrid the Haughty. And I'm going to read a version by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow who obviously was a fan of Snorri Sturluson because in Tales from the Wayside Inn he retells a big ch chunk of Heimskringla. Chapter 4 Queen Sigrid the Haughty Queen Sigrid the Haughty sat proud in a loft in her chamber that looked over the meadow red croft hearts dearest why dost thou sorrow so? The floor with tassels of fur was bespent, filling the room with their fragrant scent. She heard the birds sing, she saw the sun shine. The air of summer was sweeter than wine. Like a sword without scabbard, the bright river lay between her own kingdom and Norway. But Olaf the king had sued for her hand, the sword had be sheathed, the river be spanned. Her maidens were seated around her knee, working bright figures in tapestry. And one was singing in ancient rune of Bernhilda's love and the wrath that good ruin. And through it and round it and all over sounded incessant the waterfall. The queen in her hand held a ring of gold from the door of Lad's temple old. King Olaf has sent her this wedding gift, but her thoughts as arrows were keen and swift. She had given the ring to her goldsmith's twain, who smiled, and they handed it back again. And Sigurd the queen, in her haughty way, said, Why do you smile? My goldsmiths say? And they answered, O queen, if the truth must be told, this ring is of copper and not of gold. The lightning flashed over her forehead and cheek. She only murmured, she did not speak. If in his gifts he can be faithless be, there will be no gold in his love to me. A footstep was heard on the outer stair, and in strode King Olaf with royal air. And he kissed the queen's hand, and he whispered of love, and swore to be true as the stars above. But when he smiled with contempt, as she answered, O king, will you swear it as Odin's once swore on the ring? And the king, O oh, speak not of Odin to me, the wife of King Olaf, a Christian must be. Looking straight at the king with her level brows, she said, I keep true to my faith and to my vows. Then the face of King Olaf was darkened with gloom. He rose in his anger and strode through the room. Why then should I care to have thee, he said, a faded old woman. A heathenish jade. His zeal was stronger than fear or love, and he struck the queen in the face with his glove. Then forth from his chamber in anger he fled, and the wooden stairway shook with his tread. Queen Sigurd the haughty said under her breath, This insult, King Olaf, shall be thy death. Heart's dearest, why do you sorrow so? A lot to be said for truth.
Thank you for joining me. Hail to you, the listener. Hail to Queen Sarah the Haughty. And hail to the folk. Stay true.